Hi, I have a guest below me. Look, we have Keith from the Mournival <laughs> podcast, and he's also part of, uh, you run Grimdark Painting Studio as well? Uh, Grimdustrial Grim Painting, Painting Studio. Studio. So check that out on Instagram, Facebook, wherever you can find good social media, he'll be there. Um, I thought it might be a, bit, a little bit boring just hear about me talk about this project uh, ad infinitum, so I thought I'd bring a guest along to, to help me lighten the burden. So, Keith, um, if people don't know who you are, they, they're suckers, but you run a podcast. Um, uh, y- yeah. y- you're uh, like well-known in the heresy scene. And I guess your two greatest loves in the heresy are the Sons of Horus and the uh, Space Wolves. And for this project yeah. as part of the Tale of Heresy Gamers, which we're here to preview today, it's month three, month three <laughs> of Tale of Heresy Gamers. Uh, we're going to talk about the project, your inspiration behind it, and what you hope to get from it. But yeah, th- um, month three, okay, unless you, you your, if this is your very first video you're coming into, what is the Tale of uh, Heresy Gamers? Well, uh, it's, it's more of an excuse for me to just get friends together and mess around and try and try and get something built, try and get something painted uh, with the drop of Heresy 2.0. So this is the Warlord's journey, the power, the path to power ruin. And we're charting everybody's individual journey, whether that be to collect a whole army, an addition to an army, or hell, just painting one miniature display standard. Uh, And you could join in. You can join in yourself. You look at this post, look at the bottom. You can find out how. All you need to do on any social media post, put the hashtag Tale of Heresy Gamers and join along with us. Uh, Raya, let's scroll down to your uh, month. Okay, so uh, I guess it would be quite nice to set us up. Keith, your Tale of Heresy Gamers, what was the initial inspiration behind it? What do you hope to achieve with this project? Um, so I decided mm-hmm. to choose Space Wolves. Um, I've done Space Wolves before. Um, uh, I really struggled when you asked me to do this to come up with a idea. Um, and uh, currently I'm in the process of, of moving house. So I'm kind of sorting them through boxes, everything like that. And I find uh, an old white dwarf yeah. um, <laughs> from, from uh, ni- 1995. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's got a space wolf army that I just remember being completely in love with. Yeah. Um, as... 11, 12 year old. And we kid. didn't have access to like more. Uh, we said we sound so old, but we didn't have access to like a lot of media back then, did we? <laughs> it, was, it was still a very niche hobby that you, you bought a no. white dwarf once per month, and that would be all you have to read for the entire month. So you'd pour over yeah. every single detail, every single detail of, yeah. of those images of, of that army and the write ups behind them. Uh, and I mean, this this is this whole challenge is inspired by the tale of four gamers that was originally run in white dwarf yeah. uh, that i've been rereading recently because um house of the dragons i really want to paint knights for for some reason yeah so talk us more about that army okay so how do you translate that classic idea that you that inspiration you had as an 11 year old into today uh to be honest that is one of the biggest things that i'm mm. having an issue with um when I see it, I'm like, that's going to just be so easy. I can, like, there's, uh, like, a couple five-man uh, Grey Hunter packs mm-hmm. in there. So I'll just make them ten men, and then there's... Hold that. on, we'll see if we could bring up the... See if we could bring up the army. Uh, Tale of Heresy Gamers. We can actually bring up the image. I think it was in part two. We're in month three already, so it's three months' worth of material up yeah. already behind this. And... Um, I want to get into people's collecting habits after this as well because it's really interesting. It's not, um, it's not how I expected the challenge. Okay, we got the army up here. So that that army, that classic army, is up on screen now. Please carry on. Yeah, you have a couple of five man grey hunter squads. Yeah, so a couple of five man grey hunter squads. I thought that that's probably the easiest one to do. Um, there's two ten grey. Slayer unit, um, uh, and one as the the Grey Stalker unit. Just split them up. That was nice and simple. Um, but also, uh, you have this element of ten man units is not really heresy. So I, I just always imagine like the big hordes of troops. So funny so, you should say that. Over the uh, the weekend past, I was at Anuja's event, uh, the Double Trouble, mm-hmm. uh, held at Badman Cafe. 
and I took a couple of 10 man units of tactical Marines. Uh, I, I was just mm. trying stuff out and I did feel a uh, disadvantage for having that small of a unit in tacticals when I was coming up against 20 man units who could just do so yeah. much special reactions. Now how you're able to move them around the field, how you're able to like double tap things, how you're able to fury the Legion with a reaction. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it, beyond the aesthetic point of view, it's like actual in game properties as well. That breaking them down into two yeah. smaller units isn't exactly bent unless you have some kind of like space wolf jiggery pokery you can do. Uh, not that I've mm-hmm. found um, so far, but yeah, so I've ended up changing it to two twenty man units, mm-hmm. and then it's like, do I do all the units now like full size? Um, and then you're talking like I... for this project, it's going to be a hundred marines. Yeah, I, I don't like think that. you should artificially bind yourself into into that. Uh, yeah. The two five-man units make sense. I mean, one of my inspirations behind this project was a um, in the thir- 3.5 edition Chaos Codex, uh, the sample yeah. army list that they put up, uh, just a very simple thing just to get you started uh, painting. But it was, it's one of those images yeah. that you just poured over. So it's a, a character, unit of possessed, unit of terminators, a land raider, uh, and a couple of units of tactical marines. Mm. And I'm using that as a jumping off point. So the two tacticals become two 20-man units for me right off the bat. Yeah. I'd love to introduce some Lupakai later on. I'm hoping that some brain box will come up with a design that I can just uh, either print and then add to the existing possessed models that are out now. But yeah. I, I'm I'm using it as an inspiration rather than as uh, sort of like a, a codex, something that I rigidly need to yeah. adhere to. As a Space Wolf player, you should just feel free to rip up the book and do whatever the hell it is you like. Yeah, no, that's, that's kind of... Um, but one of the things was, do I do it as um, an homage or do it as for the Baton, you know? That's how I'm going to gonna do it so definitely a homage yeah, yeah. definitely a homage homage um yeah there's a couple of other interesting units in there as well like ragnar blackmane uh will you be using the new primaris version of him and sort of like 30 king him uh yeah i'm planning to use uh the ragnar blackmane model and uh the calm model um the world eaters calm mm. oh yes uh, yeah that's a great idea because you've got that forward momentum yeah that's a great idea yeah um, I think that's kind of very, very much a nice, easy swap around. Mm. Um, the character with the big axe, yes, he is causing me a few, a few problems on how to uh, do him. So he's probably going to be like the last model that I, yeah, we'll decide talk. on. We'll talk. <laughs> so, I, I like that. That would be quite a nice contrast as well to have Ragnar Blackman or Rag, Ragnar Blackman equivalent. Old dynamism, yeah. forward momentum, aggression, and having the slightly older, yeah. wizened character. Uh, I mean, a lot of people are using the Fafnir Ran miniature as a conversion now. That seems to be like the new Alexis yeah. Pollux of this edition. Because <laughs> yeah. back in Heresy 1.0, everybody's Praetor was made from Alexis Pollux, and now it's Fafnir Ran. So that might be a nice jumping off point, maybe. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we'll we'll talk. We'll talk. Okay, so for this month's challenge. Um, I'm going to bring you up on screen again. So I have plugged in your Dreadnought. Uh, Dreadnoughts, Dreadnoughts, where are you? So if you want to scroll down to your entry. Um, okay, so this has been uh, your entry for this month. Is it August? Um, yeah. Talk us through it. Um, yeah, so in this uh, like rip-off of Kim Cyborg's army. There's two uh, two lovely dreadnoughts at the back. Um, so with the new plastic contemptors, I thought I'll, I'll give that a go. Mm. Um, one of the key things that I want to try and do with this project is develop my green stuff skills. So with the contemptors, there's so many open spaces to try and mess around with. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, I've kind of done like a a contemptor Bjorn and a. Uh, a nice big shooty one. Um, so could bring you up closer, yeah. So you can see like all the detail, all the filigree, the fur that you put in there, uh, and it's a great because we've. Uh, I mean, Keith's a student of mine, so we've been talking over the years like what exactly he wants to achieve through a project. Uh, it's it's important clarifying right from the outset what kind of project it is you want to produce, uh, whether it's a gaming army, so 
you use certain techniques get to get them done quicker than a display army uh, or whether you want to go uh, like this uh, so this will be the development of your skills and like the culmination of the lessons we've been through so yeah. far so you're employing a wider range of skills from green stuffing airbrush work weathering uh, freehand work so this will be sort of your Mount Olympus that you're uh, that you're scaling and it's, it's really coming off I mean yeah. individualizing them like this it takes so much longer to do but in the time that's done you've I find I'm fully satisfied then by the end of a project. I'm not thinking, oh, I need to go back and pick yeah. them. I could have done that better. I get that very clear break in projects. And I found that's the way yeah. I found to be, uh, I'm able to grow quicker as an artist uh, by taking on new challenges rather than sort of like going back and picking that yeah. same scab. Uh, there you go. So we've got that one. What's the other one that you have? This other dreadnought. Let's open in a new tab. Yeah, that looks good. And um, uh, back banners as well. Yes, that, that is one of the main things for this classic. army. Is e yeah, everyone's having a back banner. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's sort of started to be reintroduced, especially with the uh, Sons of Horus Praetor from Forge World. The back banners. Back banners are back. Yeah. Back in this edition. Uh, they've got... Yeah. And, um... We're finishing off with that beautiful... Um, so uh, back in the day back in my day um, dreadnought kits when they used to be all uh, 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 made of lead used to come with these uh, stickers, these transfers that you could put on top of banners uh, now I'm guessing that you'll be freehanding an equivalent of this yes which uh, I've already tried like starting and uh, it's, uh, it's not going well at mm -hmm. the moment but yeah, the, it will be the first on. pass never does. The, the, like the plotting bit of it, it, it takes a while to get yeah. right. But yeah, really super interested to see uh, what you're going to progress there. Can you give us a little preview on what you have lined up for next month? Uh, so next month is. Oh, what have I got? Um, so next month is. I'm working on um, the missile launcher squad uh -huh. at the back of the picture. Um, I've kind of used um, so this is going to be absolutely <laughs> terrible but use the uh, tech uh -huh. marine stuff so I've got to the point where I need to add all the green that stuff works. to him and everything like that no, that really works and, uh, yeah because like, the old metal um, long fangs had like really chunkier that's legs right yeah they came about that castle motif down the back of the legs, or the, yeah. the, on the bottom of the legs. Um, so I've gone out and brought the Iron, Iron Hands Veteran mm -hmm. set, yeah. uh, and using their legs for that. Oh yeah, those are the Immortals. Uh, for the missile. Uh, the, the... Oh, right. I was tempted to use the, um, the um, Immortals for my Chieftain unit, because they had that nice right. big chunky very heavily yeah. armoured appearance to them. Okay, great. Can't wait to see what... Um, do you think it'll get painted by next month, or...? Uh, I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. In, in between a um, uh, move and everything, yeah, let's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> ambition is critical, right? Uh, right, okay. Yeah. Let's have a look and see what our other warlords have been up to. So if you want to scroll to the top of that article, to the Loyalists, and we'll have a look at Alex's uh, Loyalist Blood Angels. Right, yeah. so Alex, he's been working on, well, several things at the moment. He's an event organiser, he's helping run, oh, I think he is in charge of the LVO heresy side of things. He's also running events at Adepticon, and at the moment he's doing a push for Beta Garmin global campaign. You can find the uh, link for it here. Um, it, it seems like everybody's busy this month. Either you're on holiday or like it's crunch time getting prepared for Christmas. Um, so surprising any and we all our warlords apart from one, which will boo and hiss later on. Uh, but he's put a heavy weekend of worth of work and constructed a bespoke command squad to magnify uh, Kasparion's already intimidating presence. So let's check these out. So we've got the initial base coats on them now. Uh, the, so uh, I'm a big lover of the um, legs from the Phoenix Terminator set. We have the Custodes um, kind of like side hip shields. 
Uh, I don't know where the chest plate is from. The Blood Angel chest plate. They might be 3D printed. I don't know. Or from another kit. And then we have uh, Phoenix Terminator's arms. And... Uh, God, what's the pattern of yeah. Tartaros Terminator shoulder pads? Yeah. yeah, sleek, elegant, very Blood Angel. Then festooned with Blood Angel uh, 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 details. Love the banner. Really nice choice. And um, you can avoid a little bit of freehand doing that. You can just uh, just glue <laughs> yeah. them on. Yeah, really like. Yeah, that. these look amazing. Yeah, these look these look spot on. Okay, Keith, you're taking the next one, James. Mr. Ooh. James Wright and his loyalist Salamander. I've actually played him over the weekend. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, big, chunky, chunky units of Terminators. So he's running a very elite army, a very elite uh, small body count. I mean, I'm a big fan of this. When I started the Return to Fan <laughs> Challenge, big fan. I didn't want to be painting lots of Marines, uh, unlike this time around. Yeah. So small footprint, something manageable. Uh, so do you want to take us through this? Yeah, so he's got a, a nice big unit of fire drakes, it looks mm, like. Yeah. Um, um, it is so unusual to see salamanders now. Yeah. Um, N- never see them. And I don't, yeah, I don't know why. I, I just find the models and the, uh, like the, the, them cloaks are amazing. Uh, yeah. I love them. There you go. Scroll um, down to the cloaks, show them off. I think it's because they <laughs> took such a limited part in the heresy. Uh, even though, weirdly yeah. enough, they have. Uh, a lot of books dedicated towards them in the black book in the uh, black library series uh i mean they started yeah. this fan and practically wiped out at that point and then you see them in drips and drabs until um no spoilers but later on um and I, yes it, it is a, it is a weird one because between the color scheme the color scheme might be a little off-putting maybe because that light yellowish green might not appeal to everyone yeah, yeah. I mean, it's um, it, it's one of them greens that doesn't feel heresy uh, yeah, enough. Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, and they have this perception of being the good guys as well because they don't phosphex people to death, even though in the Black Book they yeah. have them burning elder children with flames. Uh, so, I mean, how, how morally yeah. justified can you be with that? Uh, yeah, uh, great rules, great miniatures, one of the strongest miniature ranges in the heresy. Um, yeah, you just don't... I, I don't see enough of them. Don't So I'm glad James is really... Yeah. Um, uh, w- waving the banner on this. Okay, let's have a look at Rob, yeah. Dark Angels, who are loyal-ish. Okay, uh, unfortunately, Rob, sorry, I couldn't post up the video for this. This is the best I can get. Uh, my yeah. limited knowledge of, of technology. So he's got most of the base coats done. He is streaking ahead. He is absolutely streaking ahead with his challenge. Um, it's embarrassing. Yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. about it. So validate me into it, make me feel talented. Uh, and he's got a full write-up of where he is, uh, what he's doing with the army, how it's progressing through here. So if you did want to check it out, it's on littlelegendstudio.com. You have the full and utter write-up on there. We have this handsome chappy, Keith, which we've been through already. Brian Hartley. Okay, Loyalist Mechanicum. Um, Brian has... Um, not been too happy with the new uh, Mechanicum <laughs> rules that have been released, but luckily his miniatures are looking mwah, chef's kiss. And yeah. again, streaking ahead with what he has. He has the base coats down uh, on the miniatures. He has that oiled, slick black appearance to them. Uh, all ready for the uh, accent colour that he wants to uh, put on, the, that he described in the last issue. It's described as soldier on, oh yes, the heat wave. Oh no, he has. There's a section dedicated to. <laughs> I've just seen that. And it ends. I can only hope that somehow they play better than the currently seem on paper. Otherwise, this finished project may just end up sitting on the shelf gathering dust. Okay, but you can't wait to read that. <laughs> Oops, Daisy. Sorry. I've just. Um... Okay. Blood Angels. Would you like to take us through the Blood Angels? Dan Palfrey's Blood Angels. Again, I just feel I, I feel shame that I've like literally just built two dreadnoughts and everyone else is doing like mm-hmm. all this stuff. Uh, so a big favourite um, two point the Kratos. Yeah, have you played? I, one? I've played against I one. Played uh, I was a little right. underwhelmed uh, because the barrel, that main barrel of the gun, is only like twenty four inches. 
uh, range, right. and then if you end up with night fighting, uh, it's yeah. The the Kratos didn't do much in the game I played against it, but uh, I think the Volkite version of it I think is a lot stronger. Uh, and the Melter Cannon, the consensus is the Melt Cannon's the way to go with it. Uh, but for my own Kratos, I'm just going to add Volkite absolutely everywhere. After seeing what a unit of Volkite heavy weaponry can do, whew, yeah, it's monstrous. So yeah, uh, all Volkite, because uh, I love the miniature, I just absolutely love the miniature to bits. Um, yeah. A, a mainline uh, heresy battle tank for the Astartes. It, it it was a hole that needed to be filled. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, I have played it, but a little underwhelming from what I've uh, I've seen at first. Okay, uh, Zephon. Yes, <coughs> he's done a lovely job on his mm, on his sword. Yeah, between the sword and the base, like everything else is just sort of like yeah. clocked in between. Uh, it, it's work in progress. Uh, he still needs to do the eyes and clean up a few bits and pieces. But yeah, the bits that have been developed, absolutely beautiful. Uh, and I think there are three Blood Angel players who are uh, in this challenge. Um, well, Anu, she's, he's running uh, an allied detachment, uh, the Defenders Assault. So he's running um, uh, Imperial Fists and Blood Angels in this. Uh, you know, I wonder who will end up with the prettiest Blood Angels at the end of this challenge. <laughs> Be intriguing to see. Blood Angels is an army that I've kind of always had in the back of my head. Today. Uh, everyone has, uh, um, yeah. It's it's one of those legions. Yeah. Like from when you think of the Horus Heresy, there are a few set pieces that come to mind. Istvan, um, for me, uh, back in the day, it was Talon, and it was the yeah. Siege of Terror. It was that fight at the Imperial Palace where Horus is standing over a broken Sanguinius. So there are certain beats in the heresy like you automatically lock into, and that that's one of them. I think if you're playing heresy, you're in, you're in, interested in the law, you're interested in the history, and there is always that itch in the back of your head. Ooh, blood angels! One day, one day, blood angels! And their new day of revelations is shockingly good, shockingly good. I was on the receiving end, on the receiving end of a beatdown this weekend. <laughs> uh, but Anoush, um, so this is what he's. So this is the guy who helped co-author the rules as part of the Forge Rules Studio. Um, and he is currently going through test pieces on how to create the perfect yellow for his army. Something that isn't too warm, too cool, too cold. And um, I love how organized this guy is. Not only has he <laughs> painted like test pieces, but he's done it with all these like like a Venn diagram. Uh, so of all of these, Keith, <laughs> which do you think is your favorite out of them? Uh, so I like the... Uh... The pink mm -hmm. pre-shade with the GW contrast imperial face. Yes, yeah, it's either that or the Liquitex orange. So same pink pre-shade, but either Liquitex, yeah. Liquitex yellow orange or contrast imperial fist. I think the strongest. Um, and uh, in his article, he runs through uh, the challenges of this, what he likes, what he doesn't like, and how he's going to evolve the scheme from his original. So this was a, his original imperial fist scheme. And as we can all see, he's evolved... He's evolved already, no matter which one he yeah. picks. <laughs> right, yeah, we get on to the good stuff now, on to the good stuff, the traitors. Um, Miles David, traitor sons of Horus. Uh, for years, I have played Blood Angels. I've always been on the side, side of Angels, so it feels very liberating to play the bad guys for once. Uh, just to be an absolute and utter um, a-hole uh, and, and uh, you know, just take glee in being an utter war criminal uh, and this is the commander of my infantry force uh, so this is uh, inspired by the uh, Horus Aximand character uh, this was a yeah. limited edition uh, miniature produced for Little Legend events and it was available at your event Keith and it will be available we're crafting another one and it will be available at your event that's been held in February in Cardiff yeah that's a segue to give it a little plug so, yeah yeah doing a Instagram five event. It's a uh, oh, what is it? It's five thousand points doubles. Yeah, so two thousand five hundred um, each person. Yes, yeah. and, uh, it's a uh, yeah. It's going. Uh, we we need loyalists. <laughs> we need loyalists for the event. It's like traitors. Are, I'm I'm full up with traitors. Just anyone that is a salamanders, raven guard. Uh, who else? Oh, what other legions? Uh, so on the they were Iron Hands, Salamanders. Yeah. Um, 
uh, a Raven Guard. Uh, Raven Guard. There's some. I bet there's someone super obvious that we're just completely forgetting. Were there a limited amount amount of Imperial Fists there, or did that come afterwards? Uh, I haven't put Imperial Fists there, hmm. um, but if it gets to a point, I may have to. <laughs> but we. I mean, so far there's uh, 68 people coming. Oh, wow. So that's one of the biggest um, heresy events in, in the UK then? Uh, I think it will be. I'm kind of getting a little bit nervous now when I'm, I'm seeing them, but seeing the figures. But, yeah. Yeah. Looking I mean, the first it. one we held, Return to Fishland, it was very much a sort of like small centurion level event. So bring yeah. a couple of squads. Uh, was it 1,200, 1,500 points? 1,500, 1500 points. points. All infantry, a couple of dreadnoughts. Uh, come and have fun. Come wipe out your fellow man. This one, you're going the opposite direction, really pumping up the values. <laughs> yeah. And um, there's been something in the background in a couple of these videos that I'm working on for the event. Um, so keen eye viewers will know exactly what I'm talking about. This, by the way, is to cover up the mess. That I, I'm not I'm not keeping anything like secret. Or that that's just purely to conceal mess that's in my workspace. But yeah, I'm working on something uh, for that event and, and can't wait. Um, if you want big battles set in the Horus Heresy, if you aren't sure about the rules, there are a lot of people there very experienced and will be very experienced. Yeah. We will help you along. They aren't that hard to pick up. If you're a little bit unsure, contact either myself or Keith. We will help you develop a list. We'll help you just ease you into the scene. So if you're a little bit unsure, if you're a little bit hesitant to come, get in contact with us, chat with the group. It's a really nice, easygoing group that we have. Uh, we'll we'll bring you in the right way. Uh, but anyway, yeah. so this is my entry for this month's... Uh, I find... <laughs> I'm the kind of person who eats dessert first. Um, so uh, the traditional way to collect an army, right, is you start with the troops and you get through the back-breaking labour of it first. And then you might reward yourself with a vehicle, with a rhino or something. Then you go into another set of troops. Well, I've started right at the very head of the uh, of the force. And I think Horus would be proud of me going for the head first. There's a joke in there yeah. somewhere about the spear tip, but <laughs> you'll have to flesh that out. Uh, yeah, so this is my version of uh, Horus Axman with his... People keep telling me it's a moonlight blade. I've never played that game, and no. every other um, comment I get on on this miniature, oh, it's the moonlight blade. Like, okay, yeah, it's the moonlight blade. Uh, and there are a couple of um, Easter eggs, sort of like popped into this miniature. Um, I I'll leave it for viewers to kind of like guess which ones are on there. Um, yeah, I was really super proud with how he's turned out. Uh, I put a lot more. Uh, emphasis on the face because he has that w that cloak sculpted behind him. Yeah, uh, and I was a little bit nervous putting the white behind it and, and making sure that his head still still stood out. So I've included a lot darker tones there, a lot more saturated tones, in order for his face to stand out against all that white. Uh, I think it adds a little bit of like upper bulk to him as well. Uh, yep, so that's that's my entry. There are more photos on the leg littlelegendstudio.com as well as a full article uh, for this. Okay, Samit, uh, Traitor Night Lords. Okay, uh, so two Night Lords players in the challenge. Um, and I think Samit, he's been having a difficult time coming up with a colour scheme uh, for the Night Lords. Uh, Keith, have you ever painted Night Lords? Have you ever tried? Uh, no, because we... So, um, Night Lords have always interested me, but we actually have a, a very big Night Lords gamer right. that, um, so it's one of them, you, our circle of heresy gamers is quite small, so, uh, I don't want to step on his toes for trying, but... And I guess if you are developing a project, you want a little bit of variety to the forces you're fighting against. Yeah, yeah. if you're having two Night Lords players, it doesn't, doesn't really work out. Um, but Night Lords, they suffer from that classic problem of midnight clad. How dark should you make the armour? Uh, when you start adding uh, lighter values to it, it just completely blows out the contrast of it. So how dark, how light do you go? But I think Samiti's finally come to peace with his colour scheme. Uh, I mean, that Night Lord blue is, is just spot on. I would suggest Samit. A few blood stains here and there. They are the nicest of legions, and it really shows off sort of like that that viciousness within the legion, and it adds an extra texture to everything. Uh, but I think he's got those spot on. 
I think he's got those absolutely spot on. I love the ZM bases as well. He's got for them. Uh, right, we have Craig V. Uh, Keith, you're taking this one. Oh. So, yeah, he's, uh, he's Emperor's Children. It's got more... Well, there's a lot of... Uh, seems to be a lot more like magenta in that. It's a lot more like a the plum children. pink colour yeah. to them, isn't it? Yeah. But... Uh, it's a, it's very unusual. It's a very different way to to go mm. for him, but I'm like, I kind of like it. Makes it a stand out. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is like another Empress yeah. Children army. That's just so like um, I guess this. Okay, I'm going to do what you did. It's going to look horrible on screen, but tell totally. <laughs> So this is like the very classic uh, Empress yeah. Children scheme. Like it's all very royal purple. But, uh, that leans more towards the blue side of the spectrum, whereas. I think they'll be developing to like full blown traitor, so you're gonna see more of like a magenta yeah. swing to things. Yeah, and I think that's that's a a nice way to go. It's, if you're basing it for later mm. on, yeah, it's gonna be swinging more for the pink than the pur- uh, than the purple. Right here, yes, so. David. Let's lay in on David. Uh, there's his Instagram here. Anybody watching this video, if you want to leave uh, like an abusive comment on his, uh, no, please don't do that. Please don't do that. But you know, if you want to send like a friendly jo- Josh in thing, yeah, I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Um, uh, but uh, post something up on his feed, like why didn't you complete the tale of heresy? Yeah, go go ahead. Let's let's encourage some cyberbullying. Why not? Uh, and no, no, David. Uh, I mean, each one of us has two do overs for this challenge because we're adults and we sometimes have other stuff to do. Um, and that's what David had to do this month. Like he just had other stuff he needed to be getting on with. Uh, and look at look at that dog. How can you be mad at a human being with a dog like that? that loves him so much. So uh, yeah, yeah. Don't don't leave any abusive messages for him, please. David Shu. I'm sick of this guy. I'm just sick to my back teeth of this guy. Yeah. Because not only is he a great painter, but he's painting them all very very quickly as well. I mean, just look at these sons. He's just. As a fellow Sons of Horus player, he just puts me to shame. It's He's really putting every one of us to shame. Look at this unit. Snipers are a lot better in this edition. I mean, leadership is coming into play a lot more. Uh, so this unit is going to see some real play. Um, he's all. He was also attending an event and he needed an NPC, so a non-participating character. So he used the old um, yeah. Forge World limited edition Davenite Priest. Um, it is... I've got one of these Me too. somewhere. Horrific and, miniature. It, it's yeah. not a very good yeah. miniature. It's it's not a very good sculpt, but uh, no. he's made this look very, very nice. Like he his his paint job was yeah. elevated. Um in my opinion, a rather substandard sculpt. Um what else yeah. he got here? Uh yeah, and another unit of and he's actually progressed them on from here. So if you want to check out his um Instagram you can see the progress he's making on these troops. They just look freaking amazing. And Keith, he's mixing armor uh, armor marks. Oh, yeah. I, uh, well. Go on, do tell. Tell <laughs> for, us. For my own army. Invent your spleen. I, I just, I just can't do it. I, I, I try. It's really, a, it's really hard work for me to mix armors. It's even in the unit. And I just, I just oh, I don't know about why. Like at the moment, I've got mixed armors in my space wolves, and I literally I paint the mm-hmm. the mark three and then paint the mark six. So I pretend it's like two different units in my head. I, I so just can't would you like to it. say anything to Christopher? Do you like to have a go with him? Do you like to dig into him? Do you like to leave him any abusive messages under your burner account on Instagram? I, I would do, but these are just so good. Uh, yeah, How can you I know. Cross? It's infuriating, isn't it? It's absolutely infuri- <laughs> he's, he's that like perfect crossbreed of fast and good. And he's, an, he's a nice guy as well. So yeah. if you wanted to learn how to paint this Sons of Horus green, he has a free PDF up on his website uh, that you could go. And there's a, a, a couple of different ways to do them as well. Um, it, it's hard to be mad at him, but I'll, I'll summon up the energy. Okay, Keith. Our second Keith of the challenge. Oh, should I call him the second Keith? Keith 1, Keith A. We'll go with that. Uh, it all depends which one of us is the older, oldest. And I guess who's painted the most as well. 
Yeah, so, you're yeah, Keith 2. Keith sorry, <laughs> sorry, Keith 2. <laughs> 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 my God, these Night Lords. Oh, my God. This. Talk about that perfect blue. Um, it's not too saturated. It's not too dark. It's not too light. It just hits that perfect yeah. mid-value. And he's accented it very nicely with the basing, with the Volkite. They just look so, so vicious. And if you wanted to learn how to paint these, he has got a free PDF or a free tutorial he's put together on his website that's linked in, in here. Loyalists are boring. So go check those out. And that is it for our warlords. Let me just scroll through, make sure I haven't missed anyone. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, yeah, that is everyone. Okay, so if you wanted to join part of the challenge, all you have to do on social media, put Tale of Heresy Gamers, and we will have a look at your stuff. Now I'm going to look at here. Ba -ba -ba. Uh, where is the hashtag? Keith. Oh, Keith. There's no Tale of Heresy Gamers hashtag on your post. Naughty Keith. Oh, no. Naughty, naughty Keith. Uh, okay, let's have a look on here. I bet I haven't done it on here now after uh, chastising you. Ah, Tale of Heresy Gamers. Here we go. So let's see what the community have been up to. Tale of Heresy Gamers. Oh, wow. What is this? Okay, so a hair poom, uh, a well-known, well-beloved well member of the Heresy community, is creating absolutely beautiful... Um, World Eater. We need to get a World Eater player on this challenge. Yeah. Um, I love he's gone with the red and bronze. He's, it, it feels like if you're collecting a, a, a World Eater army now, you need to have the red rather than the blue. Yes. Yeah. It's it's a weird progression we've made as a community, isn't it? Well, I, I just mentally, I mean, that's not like a hard and fast rule. You won't be, you won't have your heresy card revoked or anything if you if you do that. Oh my lord! Here, yeah. uh, so Dawn's Arrow, which is uh, Christopher Shu. Uh, again, I apologise, I'm butchering that name. Um, he's been working on some more Sons of Horus. So you can see how it's progressed from his submission. Uh, we have Green Company Painting, the third known to make use of the eye device. Okay, some beautiful, beautiful painting there. More Dawn's Arrow. I'm going to ignore his posts now because they're just they they're making me sick to my stomach. Yeah. Dread Monkey Fist, I think he has the best uh, handle of, of the heresy. Some That's the royal purple imperial um, Empress children we were talking about. Um, yeah. We even have some really nice conversion work. Brad Wright Mini. Beautiful. Is that word bearer? Uh, Kit Bash and Ash Ashen Circle. Yes, it is. Oh, wow. Look at this as well. Edge of Empire. Mm -hmm. Uh, part of the participants, so we, you're able to see the work of our warlords progress. So this beautiful conversion this morning from Flinty Third. Um, okay, this is gathering a pace very quickly. So you're able to check out Tale of Heresy Gamers on Instagram, be able to see everybody's beautiful, beautiful work. Um, okay, and that is the roundup for this month. Um, I guess one of the things I wanted to address with this challenge is just seeing how people's collecting habits have changed um yeah so when i envisioned this challenge it would be very much running along the tale of Harris, tale of uh four warlords four gamers how you start with a challenge and you paint yeah. like a unit every month then when you take a photograph okay that's my submission for the month it's not like that anymore um i mean certainly with me i'm I'm not so concerned about doing like a miniature or a unit per month. It's more, okay, I'm building towards an end goal. So this month or the next couple of yeah. months, I'll just spend building. Uh, I mean, I know I'm a commission painter by trade, but I'm doing this yeah. in my spare time. This, is, this isn't part of my working life. I'm doing this in my <laughs> spare time like, uh, like yeah. normal human beings. Um, I'm finding like I'll, I'll go through like this huge amount of work just building constructing, airbrushing everything at the same time, and everything will be finished roughly at the same time. And I think that's reflected with everybody's yeah. challenge, challenges so far. Um, um, yeah, I mean, for me, because... So this army is, is mm. solely for a collection. It's not for... Like, I want to play games for, with it, but it is just for yeah. 
a collection. So I'm literally building a squad and then painting that squad and then carry carrying them because I, I have no um, no need for to be mm. ready for an event or anything yeah. like that. So it's it's kind of strange because normally I just I, I build an army, paint it all at once, go to an event, saying like this. So I'm trying to do it. Uh, mm. I mean, this army I'm collecting, I want it to... done and finished by the February event. So that's sort of like the end goal that I have in mind. Yeah. Um, th- so this month, uh, I've got Dreadnought on the painting table. I've done a video for decals on it. Uh, the Kratos, uh, I've just put the decals on. I need to do the... Uh, I need to get a little bit of a move on on the uh, Chieftain unit. Uh, but then the rest of the month, I'll just be assembling basic mooks. I'll just be assembling basic guys. I might, if I'm good, if I manage to get through all that, get a unit of the new possessed by Games Workshop and see if I can convert them into yeah. uh, Lupakai. Uh, yeah, that's that's me for this month. Okay, thank you so much for joining me, Keith. That was a lot more pleasurable of an experience than just doing on my own. Um, I my hope is to get more of the warlords on here to talk about their projects, talk about their inspirations, talk just just chat, just have a chat with people about this. Uh, if you did want to join in the t- challenge, hashtag hashtag uh, tale of heresy gamers, and we'll run through it. And you're able to see how everybody in the community is developing towards uh, what an end goal, whichever that is. Be okay. We're going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, uh, and yep. we'll catch you catch you next month. Okay, bye bye. Bye 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 bye.